Last time I gave you a quick tour of our newest renovation project that we're working on, our new little crusty house that needs a lot of work doing to it. First thing that we need to get done is to draw up some plans so that we can get planning applications in and we need to come up with some ideas. So that's what today's video is all about. Hi folks, welcome back to our 1920s renovation project that we're working on and it is a three bed semi-detached house that needs an enormous amount of work but of course we've got these gorgeous back gardens and it's just a, a dream project that we've been waiting on for a long time and today we need to measure everything up and we need to come up with some plans as to what we're going to be doing with the place. One of the first things that I wanted to check was uh, which walls are solid walls and which walls are hollow walls because that's going to affect how we can move rooms around and we can work out what's going to be an easy job and what's going to be a hard job. We're in the living room at the moment and uh, obviously that is through the neighbour's property on the other side of the chimney breast. We've got the back garden out that way so just so you know kind of where we are in the house. So this wall leads through into the front, what would it be, like a dining room? And that, that's solid. What about this wall? To the kitchen. That's solid. Um, what about this wall? Through the dining room, that's solid. Solid. Um, Solid, uh, solid, so that's the same wall, solid. That was the outside wall, so obviously that's solid. What about upstairs? Upstairs is where we'll have the, the hollow walls. Let's see, we've got obviously a little toilet here. Um, that's solid, that's solid. That's brick, solid. We're at the front bedroom. Between the bedrooms, it's got to be hollow. No, that's brick. That's to the bathroom. What about the actual bathroom wall? Bathroom's got to be. No, that's that's brick. That's solid. Just to verify on the other side. Got some weird, I don't know what's going on with that. That's solid. That's solid to the other side of the staircase, so... Uh -huh. About this, that's solid. <laughs> I have never lived in a house that doesn't have a single hollow wall. Every single wall in this house and as I say, we talked a little bit about this crack last time. I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think it's just a settling crack that's probably been there for a hundred years. There's no reason. I mean, at the end of the day, this house is a hundred years old. It's not going anywhere. I think that's just settled probably when the property was quite new and it's just never been fixed, is my guess. It certainly looks like an old crack. It's not a new crack, that. But you can see the cracks kind of coming down there you can see it's following across this bit of wall here. But other than that, there's, there's no problems. There's no problems downstairs or anything. So, hmm, time will tell. Nothing to worry about. It doesn't bother me one bit. And we'll save going up into the loft for a future video. So don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll work out what's going on up there. But the objective of today was to work out what hollow walls have we got and what solid walls have we got? And the answer is we have no hollow walls. Okay, fine. Uh, we'll have a quick glance at the electrics while we're here because some of these floorboards are loose. And we'll just work out whether the electrics are going to be a nightmare or not. I mean, it's not great, but it has been rewired at some point by the looks of it. I haven't got my tools with us. I'd like to have a look inside those junction boxes and see 
what state the cable's in because what we don't want is green goo syndrome, which we've talked about before on this channel. But if the rewire was done around the 1960s, 1970s, what you can end up is uh, having green goo seeping out your cables, which you don't particularly want. If the rewire was done in the 1980s or 90s, then it's probably absolutely fine. It's just a bit of a mess and needs tidied up. And there's obviously, because we've got storage heaters everywhere, I think the electrics are probably going to be fine. Fingers crossed. Now we've already talked about the fact that the mains water comes in under the sink here. I'm not going to show you at the minute because it's not very exciting. Although I'm not convinced that the stopcock works because the taps still work even though the water's turned off and that includes the cold water and the cold water should be coming straight off the mains. It might be coming from a cold water tank, it shouldn't be, not for, if the main stopcock is there, a cold water tap there should be coming off the main. so it could just be a faulty stopcock, we shall see. Briefly mentioned it last time but electrics come in down the bottom there on the other side of the kitchen, I think that'll be fine, we can plan around that. The only other thing is drainage so we've got no manholes in the garage none out hmm, it's so overgrown you can't really tell we've obviously got this drain here uh, we haven't got any soil stacks on the back of the property so the only soil stack seems to be at the front so what i would quite like to do is have a look where the drains run at the front of the property subject you to what was in there but um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward really we've got like just a main kind of sewer line going straight along in front of the property probably just going from property to property and uh, let me get my phone out the road in case I drop it and then I don't know if you can see but we've got two pipes coming from our property basically one there and one there which um, is interesting. I'm not quite sure why there's two because there's only one soil stack. So Lord only knows one of them might just be disused. It could be the drain from the back of the property, but I think there is a separate sewer for uh, rainwater. I th I'm not sure if we're on a combined sewer uh, or not, but either way, now to report really. Uh, we've got front of the property there and we've got a main kind of sewer line running along the front and our wastewater come through one of those two pipes I'm not sure which one in fact what I'll do I'll go and flush the toilet and we can work out which one it is yeah so it's the furthest back one then so I don't know what that front one's used for. Might not be used for anything. It goes off kind of diagonally. Quite straightforward. It's just that drain. And I'm not sure for the back drain where that one goes. I presume it links into this somehow. Okay, cool. Jobs are good. Right, a couple of other things I want to check before starting on the plans. It would be nice to know what's going on under the ground floor. And um, the only floorboard I can see that might stand a chance of coming up easily is this one here. So let's have a look and see if we can see what's going on under the floor. I'll 
Jesus. Get my torch. There's not a lot to see, to be honest. There's not much of a void. Sometimes you hit lucky and you get a big crawl space that you can actually crawl under. <laughs> but uh, no such luck. It's, we've got less than a foot. But what you can see, oh, look, here we go. Here's the lead water supply. So, that there, that's the water supply coming in. So, I kind of feel where that's going. Where is it going? Huh. It's got so much rubble on top of it, I can't tell where it's off. Is that just where it goes under underground? I'd have to get more floorboards up, but I think there's like a sandy bit down the bottom there. Let me see if I can show you. Right, can you see that kind of sandy area just to the left hand side? Well, just just to the right of the floorboard there. That grey grey pipe and then that that's it continuing through there to the back of the kitchen. It must be very close to uh, floor level. Again, until we get this floor up. I don't know what's under here, whether it's wood or concrete, I'm not sure. But to me, that looks like where the water's coming in. It's all dry, at least. Nothing to report. Nothing out the ordinary. Joists look happy. No woodworm or anything that I can see. All looks solid. So yeah, obviously we've got wooden floors in the hall and in the front room and Plywood? So, oh no, floorboards. <laughs> weird line up. So floorboards are in the living room. Kitchen? I'm not so sure. Concrete, I think. Concrete floor in here. And then the only other thing I wanted to check upstairs is what way the joists are running, because from the direction of the joists, you'll get an idea of what's going to be load bearing underneath. So here in the hallway, floorboards are running that way, so joists must be running. That way, same in the back bedroom, so joists must be running left to right across this room. But in the front bedroom, <laughs> they run that way, so the joists must be running across that way, which is interesting. But obviously everything's a supporting wall because the, these are all solid walls. So yeah, anything that comes out underneath is gonna need RSJs. And this will definitely have joists that are being supported by the wall underneath. So absolutely, if we take the wall out between the current living room and dining room, it'll need a big steel of some description put all the way across this room. I'm assuming, yeah, you can see from the floor, which way the floorboards are running. So the joists must be going that away, front to back. So all of the rooms, the floorboards are running kind of uh, left to right as you're looking at the front of the property. Apart from this room, apart from the front room where they run perpendicular to that. Such is life, you find these quirky things. Right, I think we have enough information to start drawing up some plans. So, let's head back to the computer and I'll show you what we're dealing with.
right there we go all done after a little bit of playing around it's just a very rough model uh just very quickly done obviously the adjoining house is on this side semi-detached house so uh it, it kind of ignore this side of the property we've got the garage the single garage there on the left yeah, i'll show you the back of the property so we've got that kind of bay thing coming out at the back at the moment and the garage there and obviously the bay at the front and the little porch on the front as well so i'll show you downstairs first of all we have got kind of dining room thing at the front here living room at the back i haven't put like every dimension on but it's just so you can get a vague idea of the size but living room at the back here kitchen over on the left i don't know what's happened to that dimension and obviously chimney breast wise we've got this main chimney breast in the living room here and we've got this funny little diagonal chimney breast in the dining room as well briefly mentioned before but all of these are solid brick walls everywhere not a single hollow wall in the property and then just adding the upstairs walls in so you can see where the stairs come up here into this little kind of hallway area here we've got a toilet at the front we've got a little bathroom at the back here which isn't actually big enough to get a bath in and then we've got bedroom one bedroom two and bedroom three so you can get a kind of vague idea of the size uh, that they're, they're not big rooms you know it is a it's a small ish house we've, don't get us wrong we've been in small houses but yeah it's not huge rooms but certainly potential to do something with this once again we've got a fireplace in the back bedroom with the chimney breast there and we've also got a fireplace in the front bedroom as well but that seems to be blocked up but obviously what was the chimney breast for that fireplace is still there and obviously the downstairs chimney from the dining room will also run through this chimney breast here once again all of these walls are solid every single wall is a brick wall upstairs and downstairs and i think actually that answers one of the questions that we had earlier about this crack because if you remember that crack is in this wall here if i just hide the floor it'll make a little bit more sense i'll hide the dimensions as well but you will see that there is nothing underneath this brick wall and there's also nothing underneath this brick wall here so i think there's probably a big wooden beam going all the way across here i mean there's no sign of movement in the ceiling underneath here so there's no cracking or anything the ceiling is absolutely immaculate i mean it could have been repaired over the years i would imagine it has been repaired over the years but i would imagine there's a big wooden beam across here and as that wooden beam dried out after the house was first built it shrunk a little bit and the shrinkage of that beam is what's caused that crack that is my guess nothing to worry about there's no sign of movement or anything now obviously until i get up in the loft it's hard to say whether these walls are structural from a roof perspective so whether or not the actual roofing members are sitting on these walls and for example if i was to take one of these walls out would it cause major problems for the roof i don't know so obviously if you are playing along at home and you are coming up with some rough plans of what you would do with a house like this then do bear in mind that it might not be as straightforward as just knocking walls down up here certainly downstairs you you definitely can't just knock walls down almost all of these walls underneath here will be structural uh, certainly this upper wall here between the bedrooms will be getting supported by this lower wall here so if you wanted to take this lower wall out you would need steelwork across to support this upper wall but yeah the solid walls either side of the bathroom aren't sitting on solid walls and until i get some floorboards lifted i'll not know exactly what's going on there but as i say i would imagine we've just got a big beam going from this wall to this wall although over there that would have to be sitting over a doorway so even that complicates matters a little bit so uh hmm it's also worth mentioning as well that the garage is just double skin brick it's not cavity so 
Uh, it would almost certainly have to be underpinned if we're building on top of the garage. Personally, I think it would probably be easier to just knock the whole garage down and start again, rather than mucking about with underpinning and cobbling of brickwork. But I don't know. Let us know in the comments if, what you would do. I'm not a builder. Loads of space at the front of the property, but we do obviously want to allow some space to park cars. And obviously acres and acres of space at the back of the property. So really within the realms of as long as it gets through planning permission it's almost unlimited how much you can extend on the back here you're just limited by imagination and costs and obviously n any neighbor considerations and things as well but if it's just single story out the back i don't see neighbors being particularly bothered about that we've got a few ideas but before i tell you what we're thinking of doing I don't want to influence your choices, so uh, pop in the comments down below. What would you do to a property like this? And next time, I'll show you what we're planning on doing. As per usual, folks, don't forget to hit subscribe. Head over to the member zone if you want to know more about all of the costs involved in doing a renovation like this. And I'll be breaking all of that down over there. And of course, don't forget to sign up to my newsletter as well. And it just gives me a way of getting in touch with you guys outside the world of YouTube. For now, thank you once again for watching. I shall see you next time. Tatty bye.